another Reformationist, radical group that had clear millennialist beliefs, was the Anabaptist movement that originated in Zurich, Switzerland. The issue at the heart of this movement is the belief that baptism should be administered upon the confession of faith. The Anabaptists challenged the prevailing Roman Catholic and Reformationist position of infant baptism. The Anabaptists also rejected several conventional Christian practices such as wearing wedding rings, taking oaths, and participating in civil government. They also believed that there was no essential difference between a Christian and a non-Christian government in their political roles. They believed that Christian governments would not make a society Christian. This issue horrified Zwingli, the leader of the Reformation in Zurich, because he insisted that Christian governments can form Christian societies. The Anabaptists were seen as radical and threatened the status quo of the Roman Catholic society and the Reformationist movement. Persecution of the Anabaptists began in Zurich under the leadership of Zwingli. In 1530, in Strasbourg, Germany, Melchor Hoffmann, one of the early preachers of the Anabaptist movement, began preaching that the literal 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ had begun and that Strasbourg was the New Jerusalem. For three years, Hoffman's millennial preaching was tolerated, but eventually he was perceived as a threat to the social order of Strasbourg, and he was imprisoned. The iron bars of Strasbourg jail might hold the man but his ideas spread like wildfire throughout Germany and the Netherlands. Eventually, this new millennialism reached the city limits of Munster, located in northwest Germany, where the marginal toleration of the Anabaptists turned into a dark, bloody tragedy. During the early days of the Reformation, the city became Lutheran. But by early 1534, the city turned in an Anabaptist direction through the preaching of Bernard Rothman, who was rebaptizing large crowds in accordance with Anabaptist doctrine. The millennium fever ignited by Melchor Hoffman gripped the city of Munster through the preaching of Rothman and two radical newcomers named John Mathis and John von Leiden. According to Mathis, Munster was now the New Jerusalem and would be a city of refuge, hiding its citizens from the destruction coming on the earth. The whole city was gripped by millennial hysteria. People were seen falling in the streets, foaming at the mouth, while others were gripped with outlandish end-time visions. the social order of Munster fell apart. Migration began immediately in both directions. The Lutheran population fled the city, while Anabaptists flocked to the city. Political control of the city shifted into the hands of the Anabaptists. Mathis now proclaimed that all spiritual corruption, especially Roman Catholics and Lutherans, must be purged from the city. He insisted that any and all dissenters should be executed. Even though the executions never occurred, violence seized the city and baptisms continued around the clock for the next three days. Mathis used the chaos in the city to seize political control. He and his followers went through the city, stealing the wealth and property of the citizenry. Rothman said, It is completely God's will that we bring money, silver and gold together. One person should have just as much as another. 
the political developments in Munster, alarmed Franz von Waldeck, the Roman Catholic Prince Bishop, to the point that he besieged the city and the siege threw the whole city into a panic. No doubt, the thoughts of the Peasants' War of 1525 must have inflamed the bishop's fear of this uprising. Mathis assured his followers that God had clothed him with special divine powers, that he even could catch cannonballs in the pockets of his cloak, thus echoing the vain promises of Thomas Munster. On Easter Sunday of 1534, Mathis and his contingent marched out to attack Bishop Waldeck. But the bodyguard of the bishop stabbed Mathis with a pike, killing him. The guard decapitated Mathis and hoisted his head on a pole for all the citizens of Munster to see. For the next year, during the siege, John von Leiden appointed himself as the Messianic King of Munster. History records that he began his reign by running naked through the streets in religious hysteria. He instituted radical religious changes that included polygamy and feasted in excess while the citizens suffered from the siege. On May 25th of 1535, the city fell and the slaughter began with the execution of the self-appointed Anabaptist King, John von Leiden. The killing lasted for two days, with the bodies of the guilty and innocent being piled together in the cathedral square. This tragedy became a disaster for Anabaptists. Their persecutors used this event as clear proof that the Anabaptists were not a nonviolent religious movement, but a violent political organization similar to Thomas Munster and the Peasant Revolt. Persecution of the Anabaptists intensified all over Europe as a result of this tragedy. The massacre at the city of Munster spread horror throughout Europe because this bloody incident occurred as a result of millennium fever gone to the extreme. The bloody extremes seen in these millennial radicals was also experienced in Russia in the 17th century with a radical millennium group known as the Old Believers. This disenfranchised group strongly believed that they were living in the last days and that the Russian Orthodox Church and Tsar Alexis I were the two beasts of Revelation chapter 13. The Old Believers formed armed resistance against the Tsarist government, and this resulted in their slaughter by Loyalist troops. The surviving Old Believers could not live in the ashes of their dead millennium dreams. Over 20,000 committed suicide by burning themselves to death. You thought Jim Jones was the only case of mass suicide inflicted by the extremism of millennium fever? The Reformation was a classic example of competing views on eschatology being incorporated into political policy with bloody consequences. Social unrest was everywhere, and the discontent of the populace was manipulated by apocalyptic imagery for personal gain. All parties involved in the Reformation, Catholic or Protestant, vilified their enemies with charges of Antichrist. When you mix millennium fever with politics, blood will flow. Extreme Millennium Fever 
can have undesirable consequences. For the Hussite community in Bohemia, their millennium dreams ended in blood, fire, and smoke. The same can also be said for the Anabaptists of Munster, whose millennium dream collapsed under the lifeless bodies of the dead that were massacred by the armies of both Catholics and Lutherans, brothers in Christ. The sad truth is this, the innocent often pay for the sins of the guilty. The conservative faction of the Hussite community in Bohemia that remained loyal to Rome also paid for the radical extremes of the Taborites with political repression and reciprocity from Rome. The same thing can also be said of the Anabaptists that suffered intense persecution all over Europe for the Munster massacre they had nothing to do with. The Anabaptists survived their Holocaust only by removal to Ukraine and migration to America. When you are bombarded with competing apocalyptic theories being heralded today by Bible teachers and fear mongers, don't ever lose sight of the fact that all of these end time schemes are theories based on personal interpretation of apocalyptic imagery. Believe what you want, but be careful of millennium fever.